it's a story. It's the beginning of a story. Are we just raving mad? Yet, yes, that's right. Just simply and consciously, and consciously crazy, crazy, stupid, full of fear, but full of boundless desires, eccentric as indecent dreams. What do we do? And if we get lost, and if we get lost and do not find anything, and if the islands, the the islands, sorry, did not exist. How to my land? To feel you for the last minutes is a guilty thrill. Both my feet will miss your soil of sand and granite. And your air, your air with its sweet taste, salty as tears, all of my tears, this singing weed of melancholy. And your sky, and your skies, and your ways, your corners, and your people, all of it. I'm so afraid to leave them, and so afraid they forget about me, about us. But we need to know what there is beyond the line. I scrutinized it way too much, this line. I know by heart this steadfast flat coast. Anyway, it's too late. Everything is ready. We leave soon, now, in fact, right now. I pulled on my pipe a little harder to silence my nervous mind. I wanted to feel the sweet smoke burning my throat, like an inebriating and actual imprint of the reality, a sign of my body and instinct that were born on that land. My eyes crinkled on the horizon, sweeping it from left to right, scanning the waves and this light purple cloud they will soon cross in a few hours. The weather was, mil was mild and clear. The village was almost jubilant. The announcement of our departure has awakened some traveler minds, recolored with sea air, the little gray land that has not sailed for decades. 20 people out of the 300 people that were living on the island had moved and were waiting for the start. Banners scrolled by some clumsy kids, traditional songs hummed timidly by old ASCII voices, a handful of teenagers unconvincingly disguised as pirates, and the mayor and his assistants these two seemed perplexed. Everyone was wagering on the outcome of our adventure. The few who dared to issue the original idea of exploring beyond the horizon line were always quickly treated as crazy. I certainly had the benefit of the doubt. I was considered a sort of wise old man, um, of wise old mind, mind and man, actually, in the village. <laughs> and frankly, my project was surprising to everybody. They said I. I had lost reason that the seller was even more careless than me and that I let myself be carried away by his youth and cockiness to dare such a journey, a journey that no one ever came back from. I was the last, the only one really to have seen before some ships embark or disembark on the harbor, the only one who knew some of the few lost sellers who dared to leave. It had been a long time that the sea was no more a hope, a mystery, or even a question for that matter but simply impassable border. The fleet moored in the port was dying. Not all ships, no longer trusted, led there by fishermen and explorers, ancestor to be slowly corroded by the salt, wind, and swell. The taste for adventure and the thrill of danger that inspired some of our legendary people had died two generations earlier and left in its place a perennial indifference to the unknown and scones in the minds of villagers. They did not need, had not even, even a little interest to venture out of their island, their dear island, so familiar and so reassuring. She was a mother earth, forever protector, forever providential. Nature, climate, everything here was plenty and serene and had filled with tender, almost organic affection, residents whose insularity had become more than a trait, a value, almost a faith. They felt sometimes elected, privileged and protected from beyond the mere ground. But there were also some of them, like me, who sometimes were annoyed by such kindness. So, Captain, happy? I've seen you looking vaguely into the waste for nearly an hour. I mean, are you okay? The small broken voice of the sailor had barely covered the whisper of the wind. Hi, sailor. Yes, all is right. Are you ready? 
Yes, packing is done. Cargo is on board. Solid knots and full barrels. Just need you now, old man. Oh, and I have to give my goodbyes, and I would like to greet the Rock St. Louis before departure. For the luck, you know. Greet the... This again? You go. And take luck for both of us. I have to speak with the wave. And he escaped trotting toward the center of the village. His face was still smooth, unruffled skin, sleek cheeks, bright eyes wide open. He was enthusiastic and brave, optimistic until death, as he always said, and young, so young. The candor of his inexperience was violent, slapping me in the face each time I looked in those eyes, hurting like a burn, the fire of youth and hope. I was a little scared and fascinated. He was different from other kids his age, a loner, no parents, no siblings, and no friends, really and yet the only one who made me feel like family. Thank you.